I'm glad you, you said finances and, and Joanne mentioned, you know, what are the, the costs based on the decision you make uh, other than what's, you know, down on paper originally. Um, uh, costs, price, money is, is dear to my heart as a former CDMO business development guy. And I, I don't like to avoid them. I like to talk to the customer a, a, about them. So, um, you know, I, you often hear, and, and we decided not to focus a lot on finance and, and pricing, but uh, like Ken just said, you, you often find out it's not the highest price or the lowest price that's in the C, that's in the RFP, but it's a, uh, it's a consistent uh, uh, a number usually that wins the day. Um, but yeah, uh, do do you any of you want to speak a little bit more about how to recognize when you've got the right costs in the RFP that come back from the CDMO, or when you should challenge? Hey, this you know this doesn't look right. Um, I mean I'll, I'll jump in this and it's going to be focused on, on viral vectors and cell and gene just because that's the space I've been in for quite a while now. And I, I think having transparency in how a CDMO prices, um, you know, if you're in doing process development with a CDMO, it's in, it's really difficult to come in with, with a, you know, a basket price, right? Cause it's, they don't know your process or what you're trying to develop and, um, you know, and so you're going to go in a time and materials, uh, maybe a little bit of, you know, campaigning that they, they know a certain amount that they can do, but it's really difficult. And so I think having that transparency and back and forth um, with the CDMO to understand how they're going to price it out and that it's, it's um, reasonable and fair um, is, is really important. And that kind of goes back to that day one relationship. If they bring um, the business development folks that are going to be building the cost structure and even the finance. Um, I happen to see some of my CDMOs have their their BD and finance people on and, and maybe they're listening in. We have great relationships over a period of time that where, you know, we have this open dialogue and I don't have, understand their book of business and how they price things, but I know how they're going to go about it. Um, and we have some reasonable expectations um, and, you know, we don't always agree. Um, and sometimes, you know, they'll, um, they'll look at our perspective on, on a cost and what it should cost versus what they you know, say it's going to cost um, and have that. And, and I, I always, I go into my relationships with CMOs um, with this. I don't want to be the least favorite customer, right? Um, it, it just doesn't. And, and I know Joanne's laughing because I know, you know, this is a, an ongoing thing. If you are the most painful customer, um, you know, it's going to show people, the boots on the ground are not going to want to work with, you know, with Ken Locke because he's always hyper aggressive and, you know, always finding fault and room for improvement. Um, and I think that that's another one. It is a relationship and you need them as much as they need you. And sometimes you need them more than they need you. And, and so, you know, um, and I think showing some appreciation, particularly in project team meetings, you know, to the to the the folks on the ground who are doing the work, whether they're manufacturing operators or um, the QA people that are behind the scenes doing after hours release and, and things. You know, um, it's all really critical. 